All right, so in this video, I wanted to give you guys an update after wearing this sneaker right here for the last two months. This is the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel V4. Uh, I've talked about this one a lot on this channel. Probably my favorite new sneaker model this year. This one is, is really incredible. They made such large improvements from the second and third versions to the fourth. Like the midsole is completely different. The upper is completely different. This is a complete package for somebody that's looking for something that is soft and squishy on feet, breathable, lightweight, and so on. So I wanted to give you guys kind of an updated pro and con list after wearing these. Uh, I basically wore these on my last two vacations. I went to Arizona. And then I also went to Las Vegas. Oh, man, that's amazing. Beautiful. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Four? Oh my god, is that four times? That's a, I think that might be a hand pay. This was my primary for both of those trips. Uh, we went through aquariums and we walked through the Vegas Strip and so on. And so I figured I'd give you guys an update. Some of the things I really like about the shoe, there's a lot. And then there's a couple things I don't really like about the shoe as well. So I figured I'd break that down for you guys. So as for sizing the shoes, I say they do fit true to size for myself. True to size was right, but I do get the wide version. I don't get the regular version. I prefer the wide because I have a little bit of a wider foot. For New Balance Fuel Cell sneakers, I usually go the wide version. For Fresh Foam X, I usually go the standard version. So there is a little bit of a difference. I think that the fuel cell is made to go faster and usually it's a little bit more sleek, more narrow. And that's kind of the reason why. So I usually go true to size with the wide version. And that is the, the perfect fit for myself now if you guys do want to buy a pair of these i will link them in the description of the video as well as a pinned comment if you guys do use my link to buy it it takes you directly to new balance's website but it does give me a little bit of a kickback but it lets new balance know that you guys saw the video saw the channel and purchased through my link which helps my channel helps myself my family when you guys do that uh, immensely so i can't thank you guys enough for anybody that uses my links so i also do have the elite version that i'll kind of compare it a little bit to because the elite version is the more expensive 250 dollars version this is a crazy pair as well but they're so incredibly similar and the value that you get for this model at 140 dollars is pretty insane so let's go ahead and get into some of the things i really liked about the model so first things first the upper is nice it has this phantom fit upper and it is very breathable uh, it doesn't hold the structure very well as you can see in the toe box but super breathable like really 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 nice and as you can see i wore this one quite a bit in the last two months and still really good i didn't clean these or anything like that uh, previous to this video also you do have some heel structure as well as some reinforcement around the toe box which i did appreciate also you do have some fused layers on over top with the n on both sides uh, honestly, it's nice to see some branding like that. And then uh, across the back, you see NB Rebel back here. So you know it is a Rebel model. The tongue is gusseted. It's very thin and you don't have a lot of heel cushioning around the back, but it's enough that gets the job done. You definitely feel comfortable when you wear these. It's not as plush as something like the 1080 V13s in my opinion, but we'll come back to the tongue and the cons probably in just a minute. The main reason why this shoe is amazing though is because of this fuel cell midsole. So this fuel cell midsole is insane. It is so soft and squishy. The softest and squishiest version of the Rebel that I've tried thus far and it is really really good on feet now i know some people the soft and squishy might not be for you you might like a firmer midsole you know something like the 990s or whatever have like a firmer midsole it's not like soft squishy and stuff like that uh, this is soft and squishy one of the most plush shoes you can get on the market i would say that this is much softer than like you know the invincible runs which is a very very good product at 180 dollars but this one's more value at $140 and you get an incredible experience underfoot. Now, again, for me personally, I just like that soft, squishy feel underfoot. I'm a little bit of a heavier set guy. When I wear really firm sneakers underfoot, like my Air Max 90s, like as an example in my youth, we traveled through New York and basically walked all up and down uh, New York City. And by like fifth day of the trip, I really couldn't even walk anymore. Like the arcs of my foot were just destroyed. It really just hurt to, to walk. And this is in my youth, right? Like this is my younger years. I'm a lot older, not as in shape as I was then. And I could walk with these endlessly, like, and I'm okay with it. Uh, it's one of those shoes that you could put on and it's instant comfort. And then you take them off and I personally don't have any discomfort. Now, some people might have discomfort because of, again, the soft squishiness of the shoes. I'm not a medical advisor for those people that have like foot problems and stuff. But for myself personally, I put these on, I'm like, it's, it's heaven on feet. And I can walk around all day in these, take them off. And I have zero foot pains by the end of the day. Some people may agree, some people may disagree again feel free to leave a comment. I'm not blocking any of the comments depending on your opinion. But I have read the comments in a lot of the past videos and a lot of people say that these are one of the most comfortable shoes that they've tried on as well. So I can say with confidence, they are super soft and squishy underfoot and it is definitely a unique experience. Um, really for the price point, it's like the best in class in my opinion. There is some traction on the bottom. There is some wear and tear that I'll get into probably in the con section as well. But let's go ahead and start off with some of the pros on these shoes after wearing these for the last two months.
cuts. The first thing is, again, the breathability upper, amazingly nice. I love the fact that it's very breathable. It's lightweight on hot days, 80, 90 degree days or whatever. Uh, these are going to be a blessing on your feet. Like the breathability makes these the better option, in my opinion, over the 1080 V13s, which I absolutely love as well. The 1080 V13s are amazingly soft on feet. I did a direct comparison between both of these shoes, if you guys missed that video. But the reason why I choose these over the 1080s right now is simply because of the upper. It's a much more breathable, lightweight upper. And because of that, uh, I find myself putting these on feet. And obviously, I don't want my feet to sweat too much. Uh, and this is a really good option for that. So when I was in Vegas, walking around all over the place, this was a really, really nice pair to put on and it was a treat to be able to wear and not have any issues. I wore these into the Nike outlets even. I didn't have any Nikes with me. And I actually let my homie Paul try on my pair because he's my size and he's like, those are gonna be on my list to pick up. So it's definitely one of those shoes that is perfectly summer ready in my opinion because of the breathability of the upper. Also the fact that these are so incredibly lightweight. Like these are 7.7 .7 ounces, which is insanely light. And my 990 V6s are 13 ounces. I absolutely love these shoes as well. But for summer, 7.7 .7 ounces versus 13. I mean, this is a really nice option for your feet. And that's partly because of the upper, but also because of this fuel cell midsole. So that's the other big pro about these is the midsole is incredible. It's so soft and squishy. Uh, I love the geometric shapes through the midsole. It looks fast. It looks stylish in my opinion. I really love the look of this shoe. I know it's probably not proper, but I would wear these with jeans and a button up and I'd be happy with it. But I'd also wear these with shorts and sweats and everything else. Like it's the go-to shoe for myself right now. And I absolutely love it. And I'm waiting on a triple black colorway to come back in stock because they did have one. Unfortunately, they're sold out of my size. And I think that they actually have a collaboration coming with this model. Uh, as well, which I am super excited to be able to see. But the fuel cell is extremely soft on feet. And for those that don't know the difference, I always try to explain it to you guys. Fuel cell versus Fresh Foam X, those are the two proprietary foams from New Balance. They're both incredibly good and they have different tiers of softness. This is a very soft version of fuel cell, probably the softest on the market. I believe it's a Peepa blend, but don't quote me on that. Anyways, fuel cell is supposed to be their faster and more responsive foam that they have on the market. So uh, quick spring back as you're running around. And Fresh Foam X is supposed to be more of the recovery foam, the one for cushion. So snappy bounce back in these, and then you're supposed to have more of a recovery cushion feel in like the Fresh Foam X featured in like the 1080 V13s. But I will tell you in this new day and age, like the 1080 V13s and these are both very, very good on feet. Very soft and honestly, I feel a lot of spring back on the 1080 V13s as well, but that's just my two feet. And another major pro about this shoe is again, the price point. $140 is an incredible price. I think that is a great value for the shoe considering everything that you get in this model. Again, uh, it is a complete package if you're looking for a comfort shoe for summertime specifically because of the breathability of the upper. Now, maybe for wintertime, it's not gonna be the choice. I'm gonna go with the 1080 V13s because again, it's a little bit warmer of an upper, but uh, summertime comfort sneaker, this thing, it reigns supreme. Also, the bang for the buck comes in because this is 140, this is 250. And the upper looks very, very similar. I, I mean, I look at them side by side. I don't see any extra thickness added to the Phantom Fit on the Elite version. Uh, the only major difference that I see between these two, the tongue material is a little bit softer, uh, like different material. The collar is a little bit softer kind of material as well. So maybe that's a little bit more premium, but literally the uppers look pretty much exactly the same. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if that's true. I'm just looking with my eyes and they look exactly the same. The midsole thickness on the Elite version is a little bit thicker. And the main reason why these are different is because of the energy arc plate on the uh, bottom of the shoe, which adds crazy amounts to the propulsion, especially combined with fuel cell because it is the responsive foam. So you do get a crazy rocker toe off uh, as you're running around in these things. This is a marathon running shoe right here and one that you could probably go very, very fast in. Super good on feet and very comfortable. But honestly, out of the two for myself, for casual usage, I actually prefer these over the $250 version because I don't need that extra rocker plate that they have there. So in my opinion, the value is definitely there on the Rebels. Also, another pro is the fact that the width of the heel is so wide. Like they actually widen this out from the previous two versions. I love that they actually made this a wider version, something that I've been aching to have like for all brands, honestly, to be able to make a quick, fast shoe, but wider base on the back, not a narrow little heel because I want to be able to have multi-purposes for the shoe. And because of the extra width on this heel, it makes this a really nice option for lifestyle. I don't have any stability issues when I'm wearing these because of the width. Even though it's ultra soft, I don't feel like I'm gonna roll an ankle left or right. The fact that they do have wide versions of the shoe is also a big, huge plus. I do get the wide version as I already mentioned. Uh, so personally, I do like having the option to have a wide version of these. For the previous two versions of this model, the Rebel V3s, the Rebel V2s, I did actually get the narrow version originally and it was just too narrow for me. Like I did feel a little bit wobbly 
I feel like they corrected it and made it bigger and more improved in this version. And so usually when you have the previous version of a model, you know, it goes on sale for $70, $80 or something like that versus $130, $140 of the new model. And a lot of times it's like, you should buy the older model because it's more bang for the buck. Uh, $70, $80 if you can get the V3s, I think is a great price point. But I will tell you, I think that the V4s are far superior. So for me personally, I'd rather pony up the extra to get the V4s. Or if you don't want to pay the money now, wait till the V5s come out next year and then try to get these ones on sale because I think that this is a much, much better package than the V2s, the V3s of the Rebels. And, and those ones were really, really good as well. So it's crazy they're able to make it that much better on the future version, something I really like. So in my opinion, these are the best comfort sneakers for summer 2024. Hands down, this is the one I'm going to. I need to buy another pair still, but uh, there are a couple things that I don't love about the shoe as well. So let's go ahead and get right into that. The first thing is the tongue. For me, I don't love the fact that this tongue wraps the way it does and it's just a little bit difficult to put on because it's so narrow. Because it's so low cut in the middle, it's kind of like a forked tongue. It's a little bit hard for me to put on and this is speaking from somebody that's a little bit older. Like I can't do my no hands test in these and throw these on with no hands. I can with my 1080 V13s. I can't with these because of the way that the tongue sits. When I push my foot in, the tongue collapses and goes down and gets caught under the laces pretty much every single time. So you have to make the extra effort. I know it's a lazy factor. It's it's something worth noting though, right? This is this is how lame these cons are gonna be. Like, oh no, I have to hold the tongue and put my shoe on. Like, it's not that big of a deal for most people out there. But for somebody that's wanting to throw your shoes on quickly and you know, I'm taking the dogs out, trying to get them in the car, trying to get the kids in the car. Like I definitely want something that I can put on easily. And this one, you have to take an extra second, reach down, grab the tongue and pull up and put it on. Now I will tell you, when you do have them on, because it is semi-gusseted, the tongue doesn't slip. It just basically sits right here and when you pull up on the tongue you cinch it down they're great on feet like it feels good they're comfortable and it's form-fitting uh, I actually really like it on feet but the whole act of getting it on my foot because of the way this is laid out I know it's not for me I know it's for running uh, so for those people I'm sure it makes a lot more functional sense for me I just like a little bit of an old-fashioned tongue at the top one that doesn't dip down so low but that's my biggest complaint probably is the fact that these are a little bit difficult to get on and sometimes the tongue gets caught underneath the laces when I'm putting them on. Lame complaint, I know, but I'm throwing it out there and being honest. The other cons worth mentioning, I guess, is the upper is very thin and it is very breathable, but because of that, I feel like the upper probably will be very easy to tear after like a year of wear. I mean, I wore them for two months and I didn't have any issues, but if you're rubbing these hard on like the cement or something like that, uh, obviously it's gonna tear fairly easily. So some people may have issues with the longevity of the shoe because of the thinness of the upper. Uh, it's kind of the catch-22 of that as I was mentioning the last con that I would throw out there The fuel cell is amazing after two months of wearing them I don't feel like the foam is bottoming me out or anything like that But if you guys have a difference in opinion Have you felt like the fuel cell bottoms out or not leave a comment because I feel like this is really really good on feet And honestly it just feels like it's more comfortable after I wear it more But maybe that's just me But the con part of this that I'm trying to mention is the foam being so exposed on the outsole of the shoe There is a lot of discoloration on the bottom of the shoe where the fuel cell is showing that there's a lot of direct contact when I'm walking on the actual foam part, not just on the rubber. And so the longevity of the shoes might actually wear a little bit thin, uh, literally because of the uh, the foam on the bottom. Now, again, this might be one of those things like Nike React. Back in the day, I would say the same thing, but it was actually something that still stood the test of time, even though I had direct contact underfoot. Maybe this is exactly the same way, but only time will be able to tell. I haven't noticed any rips or anything like that. Uh, I'm sure it's possible, but at the end of the day, it feels like it's pretty durable, but I'm just throwing a cautionary note that maybe it's one of those things that breaks down over time. And again, leave a comment if you guys agree or disagree, if you guys have a pair or maybe from the past versions. Other than that, this is an exceptional pair of sneakers. I think New Balance has done a tremendous job on this model. It was one of the models that was like, yeah, I like the fuel cell line a lot. It's soft. I like the, uh, the Rebel line. It's great. It's a lower tiered model, like, like the Super Comp Trainer V2s was like my favorite one up until now. Now they have the Super Comp Trainer V3s that are gonna be coming out later this year that I'll hopefully be able to compare to these because I feel like this year's version of everything that New Balance is putting out is just 10 times better than even this like two years ago. It's just crazy, the, the evolution. But I think this is such a great option for your feet, like the amount of foam on here, the comfort that I get when I wear this shoe is pretty much unmatched by anything. I still have my Super Comp Trainers, I haven't really done a direct comparison to those. Somebody wanted to see that, but I'm really waiting for the next version. Uh, overall on feet though, they're both incredibly good. And for the cheaper price point at 140, I'm telling you, if you're interested in comfortable sneakers, these things are insane. But if you guys do wanna buy a pair, link in the description or pin comment. And after you get your pair, wear them, come back to the video and let me know, was I crazy wrong? Was I crazy right about these shoes or not? Uh, any which way, super, super good one. And happy that I was able to give you guys a follow-up video. Hope you guys like this video. If you guys wanna see a follow-up video like this on other pairs, like, leave a comment, let me know. But I appreciate y'all for stopping by and watching. Have a good rest of the day. I hope we see you back on the channel for some more sneaker content soon. All right, peace, guys.